Okay, so we have a 2008 Prius and it appears that this needs an ABS actuator. So I turn the car on and I hear this kind of clattering noise. That's normal, but normally it would stop and it's continuous on this car. So I don't know if you can hear it, but the essentially the ABS pressure pump is continually running because it cannot build pressure. Also, we have the ABS, BSC, and this other brake related light on. So we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and scan the code just to make sure you know we're replacing the right thing. All right, so here's our codes. Um, you know, we're worried about this ABS VSC track system codes. So I'll click on that. And we'll get <clears throat> the description of the codes. Based on the whirring noise this thing is making, like every five seconds it runs for 20 seconds and then off for five seconds, we already know that the accumulator's bad. And sure enough, we've got C1256 accumulator low pressure and abnormal leak of accumulator pressure. So I'm ready to condemn this thing. Let's take a look at the part. Okay, so this is what we're after. We're gonna replace this unit. And you might be uh, confused by the name because this is called by several names. It's actually the ABS accumulator or it's the ABS unit or just the ABS. In any case, it's pretty difficult to access this component on this car, and it's difficult to bleed the brakes afterwards. So we're gonna need this computer to uh, complete this uh, repair. So after we install this, we're gonna use the computer to bleed the brakes. In order to install it, we're actually gonna have to remove the inverter here. So, um, this is a pretty straightforward job if you kind of follow the steps. It's probably all said and done three to four hours. It's a great job to do yourself if you have a Prius and you want to save some money because the dealer is probably going to charge you three to five thousand dollars for this job. So it's, it's a really great way to save a Prius that would uh, otherwise maybe go to the junkyard. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is power the car down. I have to take it apart and including touching high voltage terminals. So I'm gonna safe down this car, which means first I'll turn the car off with the power button. Second, I'll disconnect the 12 volt battery. And third, I'll remove the high voltage service connector. Okay, so I'm gonna show the safe down procedure. This is what we wanna do before we touch high voltage terminals, which we have to do on this car because we're removing the entire inverter to get to the ABS actuator. Screen is off. So that's really our first and most important step. Sounds dumb, but make sure the car is off because sometimes these don't make noise and it's on and you don't realize it. Second, we're gonna disconnect the 12 volt battery. So I'm gonna have to take some of this cargo tray stuff out of here. Remove this. That lets us get this panel out. We actually start on this back edge to get this out and that. Now, here's our battery. I actually want to, personally, the way I disconnect the 12 volt battery on these, the clamps tend to get stuck. I just undo this 10 millimeter bolt in here. Okay, so I've taken this bolt out and I make sure that this is free of the body. The reason we do that is no one could turn the car on now. There is no 12 volt battery to fire up the system and there's no way the contactors could close and connect high voltage to the front of the vehicle no matter what so our third and final safety precaution is to remove the high voltage safety connector which is here there is no voltage on this now some people uh, feel that you need high voltage gloves to touch this that's not true so i'm going to pull that up rock it out and take this 
away from the car so no one accidentally installs this. So now I'm safe down. I can literally do anything in terms of servicing this car without being exposed to high voltage, except opening the battery. If I open the battery, there will still be voltage in the battery, but because I've removed this service connector, there will be less voltage. So this is also known as the mid-pack disconnect. Kind of cuts the battery pack in half and makes sure it can't ever connect to the rest of the car. Okay. Open up. You open up. Hit you one baby in my All right, so we've got the cowl out of the way, and now we can see our prize, which is this ABS actuator. We still can't really get to it too easily. I mean, here it is, I'm pointing at it. I can see it, I can touch it, but I can't really get to all the fasteners and plugs and brake lines to get it out. So we'll take the inverter off next. Okay, so we have a safety precaution to observe in this next step. We're going to be removing the cover to the inverter, which certainly when the vehicle is on, this is an area where there's a high voltage present. So I have my high voltage linesman's gloves, and I'm going to test my gloves before I rely on them for my safety. And the way I do that is I'll go ahead and roll the glove up. Just ensure it's not punctured. That one's good. And that one's good. Okay. Now, the gloves themselves are actually, they're very resistant to electricity, but they're easy to, to cut with like the sharp edge of this. So that's why these come with a second set of gloves that I'll put over that are shorter so these gloves actually just protect these gloves from being cut. These are not resistant to voltage whatsoever. And that's part of the reason they're shorter so that voltage couldn't travel a path down this glove into my skin. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the inverter cover. touch this, 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 this with just a wrench. And certainly I could just keep these gloves on when I do that work, but it's pretty difficult to work with these gloves. My main purpose here is to test that there's no voltage here. Now, I know there's no voltage here because I removed the service connector and safe down the vehicle. The vehicle's off, 12 volt battery disconnected, service connector out. But as an overlapping safety procedure, I'm gonna use a cat three meter, so thousand volt capable meter and test for voltage. So here's my cat three meter. And these are the terminals I'll be touching. I'll test the terminals and from the terminals to ground. Nothing as expected. Now I'll test these terminals. Again, nothing. Nothing, nothing. Okay, final test. I need to verify this meter works. So I'm gonna go back to the 12 volt battery and I'll connect the meter to the 12 volt battery and I'll expect it to show 10 or 11 or 12 volts. That'll just verify to me the meter's working. So the meter works. I don't need these gloves anymore. I can proceed to just undo those terminals and remove the inverter. I'm gonna keep these both separate. Now this large connector can come out. There's one out. This guy. This 
one can come out. There we go. Okay, here we go. Inverter out. Oops, not quite. That's what we gotta do. Okay. Last thing disconnected. It's a pretty big chunk. Oh yeah. There she is. Whew. All right, now we have better access to the piece we need to replace. Which as you can see is this. Like that. So we got brake lines to undo, mounts to undo, electrical connector. doesn't it? Yeah. Bolts that hold the whole frame that this is mounted to on. It's kind of a Y-shaped frame. There's one here, one in there, and one down there. And then various other bolts that hold brackets to that frame, like this bracket, for instance, is held to this large frame. So it's loose, and my next step is I'm gonna break loose the brake lines. Now, general best practice is to always use a line wrench, so I don't wanna round off these brake lines. Uh, so I'll use a line wrench, but at the same time, it's really kind of slow and painful to turn it all the way with the line wrench, so I just crack it free with the line wrench and then I'll switch to a little shorty that just allows me to get uh, freer access to it and turn it more easily. So I'm gonna proceed to take off brake lines, all these brake lines, and then we'll be able to remove this ABS unit. Oh my God, that was intense. That was not... It's not an easy part to get out of this car. Well, I mean, that's why it's four or five thousand dollar dealer job, I guess. Ah. <laughs> Woo. There it is. Oh. That's a big chunk. Yeah, that's a big chunk of Prius. All right, I got to take a break. <laughs> Alright, so here's the old unit, and here's the new unit, and I've just transferred over all the brackets from the old one to the new one. Okay, so I've got the lines reconnected to the new ABS actuator, and the bracket set in place. I'm now installing everything in the reverse of how I removed it, so, you know, starting with the big bolts that hold the bracket, and uh, then I'll re reconnect all the lines and plugs and stuff, and... Uh, then we'll go through the bleeding procedure that the scan tool leads us through. <clears throat> right, so the ABS actuator and inverter are back in. You'll notice this is still apart and we're about to turn the car on with all these components out because we just want to go through the bleeding procedure and make sure there's no leaks and all goes well. And then we'll take that final step and reinstall the cowl. All right, so we have the new ABS actuator installed. It was pretty interesting to see that the lights all just went off. So we have not bled the brakes. This car doesn't have functioning brakes yet, but 
obviously something is better than it was before that those lights went off when we didn't even clear the codes. So now I'm back in and I'm gonna do a function with the text stream that I'll show you. I'm actually gonna show the bleeding procedure in a separate video because it is quite long and complicated. The mechanical components were installed and after the bleeding procedure, the car was repaired. Codes are gone, drives normally. So uh, it was a long day's work, but well worth it.